I am the biggest, I am the largest, I am the greatest, I am the mightiest African spiritual platform. I welcome you, my people, with love, 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 lots of love. Love, love, and hate, hate. Today is a great day because we are going to talk about our heroes. I always tell you people, we should make our heroes. One day, maybe, when you people are writing something about Ghana and enlightenment and liberation of the land, don't forget to add me. I'll put my name in that book. Yes, I'm also trying to uh, write something. That I welcome you people. Today is a great day. We have one of our fathers on set who is going to tell us about some of our heroes, the things people have done. So when we are talking about heroes, don't think we don't have Ghanaians who have done a lot for this country. That's what we are going to discuss today. So let's welcome our guests for today. As for my name, you know, plenty of it, Empress. Makida, Labraska, Edine Dosso. Yen timi mbobo nini na awa hasi. Ya ye serious. And then we are going to talk about heroes. So let's welcome our father on set. Papa, we welcome you to Revelations. Thank you. Great. Today is your first time here. Yes, it so, is. So please um, introduce yourself to us and say hello to my people. Yeah, okay. Uh, I am Dr. William Collins Asare. Uh, and... Uh, Basically, my background has been essentially 11 years of uh, public service in the Ghana Foreign Service and uh, subsequent 19 years in the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees as well as uh, the Department of Peacekeeping of the United Nations. So that, that is as far as my professional work is concerned. Quite recently after retirement, I served for some three and a half years as a administrator of the COVID-19 National Trust Fund. So I was the administrator during the peak of the, from uh, April 2020 till we, we closed it in uh, August 2023. So that's about my, my work experience. Thank you so much. Papa, we appreciate you here. We appreciate you. Abusia, um, Papa is our guest for today. Our father called his one of our fathers. So that, that the, that's the reason why I'm referring to him as father or Papa. You understand this? You are Ghanaian. And to where the American what he has here. Uh, and then the topic ni here me here because um, topic ni here projecting some outstanding Ghanaians. I know you one. And then changing the narrative. Say ye and say ye knew be our ha, na ye can ye can crofwa de Julius Caesar ni a bobo boko ni a ke kahu. Ghana ye ni moli kwam in kruma. South Africa ye ni Mandela. And see and chase be and crofobi mo a ye nia maybe a shaka petanasi a ye ni ma and then e be a ube hubi. So we project them and we make our own heroes. So papa, we welcome you once again. So you said two things I will ask you questions about before we get into your topic. You said you, you, you made mention of the refugees and then also COVID-19. So I will ask you a few questions that I didn't understand about these two since you are here. When they say a refugee, who is a refugee? Well, a refugee is a, a person who for fear of persecution or danger to his life has left his country of origin and has gone to seek refuge or safety in another country. So you cannot be a refugee in your own country. A refugee has to be somebody who has left his country of origin or national, uh, normal stay and gone to another uh, country to seek safety and uh, protection. So that, that is what a refugee So if is. a normal Ghanaian youth is afraid of hunger, because there is no employment in Ghana and the person also decides to go and seek for greener pastures out there. Who is that person to? That, that, that is migration. You know, we have the situation of many people in various countries going to other places to have a better life. So you, you go because you are migrating to go and seek a better life. When people are going from Mexico, for instance, into the United States of America, for the overwhelming majority of them, it will not be because they individually, because of their race or because of their 
uh, political activity or whatever are being persecuted. They are going because they think when they, they, they go there, they will get a better life. So that, that is the, the it's, it's just one of uh, migration. But when you have a refugee situation, you, you see it. You, we're now hearing in West Africa now of, for instance, the jihadists or other problems which are happening even in our neighboring Burkina Faso. So if somebody flees because people have come to attack his village and he's afraid that they might come and attack his village a second time and crosses into Ghana, then legitimately he will, he will be qualified as a refugee. Oh, okay. Um, Father, recently a law was passed in Ghana, or a bill. A bill was passed in Ghana about homosexualism and the rest. You heard about it, right? Yes, yes. What's your take on that? I think I've been hearing the discussion which is going on. And as far as I'm concerned, I'm not sure if the bill has been signed as yet into law. So I, I, I'm not uh, very comfortable about uh, what it is because if it hasn't become law, because the, the president can also decide to make some changes, amendments to it. But basically, as far as I'm concerned, and uh, considering our own traditional setting and background, homosexuality, lesbianism, gay, and so on, are quite alien to us. So one would say, and I think increasingly some people have also been saying so, uh, that uh, it's not one of even punishing people, but rather trying to see if they can be counseled or they can be given the support to go off that, that kind of uh, a tendency. Because basically, if, if people were all to become homosexuals or lesbians, then there will be no future generation because the people will not be able to ha have, have children. So that, that, that is my take. The only comment I will add is that I, I don't think severe punishment for people who are engaging in this kind of thing is uh, very good. Uh, we rather have to try to see if we can have them change, if it's possible to have them change their mind and, and not go into even extreme forms like queer and so on, which I cannot even establish in my mind. I asked you this question because of refugee issue. So we go out there to go and seek for greener pastures. We are not qualified to be called refugees. But if in case this law should be, uh, in, in case this bill should be a law, and some of Ga some Ghanaians who are into that act decide to flee, then we have created refugees among us. Is that correct? If the law were passed, we would only be able to claim refugee status in countries in which they consider the act as tolerable. You know, so and that's what I'm saying. So, a Ghanaian cannot go to Uganda, for instance, and go and claim that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gay and I'm being harassed, so I'm coming on refugee status here. You'll have to go to if, a, a if they should country. run to America for asylum and all that, what do we call them? If you know, you go and seek asylum, and the authorities in the country will have to determine if you qualify to be a refugee or not. So if the person goes to a, a particular country and the authorities who examine asylum claims believe that the person has a very legitimate reason for fleeing, then uh, the, 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 that, that would be correct because the person becomes a refugee. Okay. You, you, nobody can flee from Ghana and go to another country and say that uh, there is a war going on or there is a, a group of uh, religious intolerant who are coming from village to village. If you go and say something like that, nobody will listen. Mm -hmm. But if somebody goes to talk about uh, homosexuality after the law has been passed, particularly if there are very severe punishments, and I'm not saying they are, mm -hmm. I haven't studied if, the, if. Mm -hmm. uh, the law, then some countries may like to offer the, 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 the uh, uh, asylum uh, refugee status to people. But 
having people come from your country going out as refugees is not something to be ashamed of. You know, for instance, if there are troubles in a country, and uh, I suppose we have to be honest with ourselves, uh, there are troubles in, say, the Boku area. It's not so flagrant as to have thousands of people fleeing. But if some people from that area flee to, say, Togo, th there is no shame. I mean, it's not a government who, which created the problem. The problem may come from all different sources. So if the person flees, it's assumed that when everything comes back to normal, the refugee will return to his country. So to use the example, unfortunate example of uh, what appears to be occasionally some flare-up of difficulties in, in the Boku area. If uh, people uh, flee and then total peace comes, then they will return to their country and we don't have to be ashamed of it. Oh, I'm not even saying uh, we should be ashamed of. I want yeah. to know if we should pass that law and people flee for asylum, if they can be uh, qualify as refugees. The reason I'm asking that. Uh, yeah, they will qualify on condition that the country they have fled to consider that as something for which refugee status can be given. So we uh, will not be the people to determine whether refugee status can be given or not. It's the receiving country which makes advocacy or which has passed laws which tolerate gay and lesbian uh, way of life. They will then have to take the decision to, to accept them as refugees. Oh, okay. You are watching the biggest. Papa, the COVID issue that came to Ghana, since you were part of those who were putting things right for us, the reason I will ask you this question. We heard two things, that Ghanaians don't want to take the job, that is one, and we also heard about some expired uh, uh, drugs that came for the job. What truth is in this? I think I have to make a, a slight uh, correction. The, the proper management of the COVID was the Ministry of Health, the Ghana Health Service, and the government per se. What I was involved in was the aspect of donations that the Ghanaian public was bringing for the government to use to support the needy. The, 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 those who needed uh, medical attention or PPE and so on. So we were not basically taking the major uh, decisions. Yeah. But you know, there were uh, old, old boys association, uh, women association, certain banks and so on, which would come and want to offer their help to government. And government didn't want to be receiving those donations. So they created the, the National Trust Fund, which had as chairperson, uh, Madame Sophia, Justice Sophia Akufu, she was therefore the, the chairperson and I was the administrator or the, the, the chief executive officer. So we were not going into the medical aspects. We were rather <laughs> helping. If a clinic says we have run short of uh, the, the, the PPEs, uh, the masks and so on, and the ones that we've ordered or what we are expecting from the Ministry of uh, health or the Ghana Health Service has not arrived, if it comes to our attention, then we will quickly go and supply them some. So that, uh, that was the, the level at which we were, we were helping. We were also able to help because our act allowed it that people who had been seriously affected by the COVID could also be given assistance from the money that the Ghanaian public had given us. So we, we distributed uh, almost uh, 4 million Ghana cities to various fa uh, families or individuals who could demonstrate that they had gone into a lot of difficulties because of the COVID. And the identification of those people was done by the University of Ghana's uh, Institute of Social and Statistical Research. So they did the research, found out the people in all, in 80, 80 districts of the country, and we made uh, 500 uh, CDs 
available per family. That may look like a small amount if you are living in Accra, but in various places, That's people, people were able to tell us that it allowed them to go and buy goods, which they started rearing. Some people said they went to buy some agricultural implements and, and seeds and so on. So it was quite a significant amount in the rural areas mm. where much of this was, was I done. I hope my central region people also got yes they are shared yes the the ev every region uh, got some but not every district because you know we have 264 districts and the the determination by the institute of statistical research was that we should take 80 poorest districts so every every region had some of the the poor districts okay you are watching the biggest my last question then we get into your topic Father, recently, a news is circulating on social media about Russia, be the, uh, about an archive that is open, telling us that Jesus was black. Have you heard about this? Yes, I have. What do you have to say about this? Well, you know, the image that we had all been brought up with, having Jesus with uh, straight hair <coughs> and a certain kind of rather light uh, light of the light uh, you know like uh, somebody from uh, finland or uh, somebody from from ireland was rather surprising because he was known to have been a historical entity he lived on this earth and he lived in places where the towns are known uh, the, you know uh, so jerusalem and all the areas were known and the people living in those areas were not pure whites. So it's not surprising that the image of Jesus as now portrayed in the documents which had been seen from the Russian Orthodox Church portray some of them as, as black. And I was uh, uh, in reaction to that uh, post. Uh, somebody told me, and I, I don't have the quotation, I'm not very good at uh, biblical studies, but somebody told me that in, I think, Daniel or something, Jesus Christ was described as somebody who had hair like wool. You know, so if he had hair like wool, then it it's, would uh, it's mean one of that us. he was more of uh, uh, the, the, the black type person than, than a straight haired white person. But I, I think. That, that, that is uh, as far as it, it shouldn't lead to any <laughs> conflict. Anyway. It shouldn't lead to any conflict. Yeah. Uh, but the reason I'm asking you this is that if they should be there with them for all this age, why are they telling us now? What is their agenda? What is their mind? Because you are endowed and your age, the reason I'm asking these questions. I, I'm not sure if the, the post, because we all saw one single post you know, uh, on social media. It doesn't quite tell us if it is something that they've always had. They said kept. it was in their archives. Yes, whether they, 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 they had always known and hidden it or it was only discovered from their archives now. If you take the view that they are only popularizing it now, then one could say it would be for political or public relations or diplomatic reasons. But it's also possible to, to assume that probably it was in the archives, but they never knew about them. Uh, I think there, there have been cases in which some old scrolls, uh, you know, biblical writings, had existed for more than 1,000 years, and they were only found uh, quite recently in this, in this uh, 20th, 20th century. It was not, I believe, uh, hidden, but it's So we should it assume maybe it was there, but it was not known to them. They just got exactly. to know about it, yes. the reason they are telling us. Yes. That's all right. But um, recently, uh, I don't know, I'm not sure I stand to be corrected. Sana Mokano. Yes, mm -hmm. stand to be corrected. Okay, you, we know uh, these Russia people are now heading towards Africa. They are in um, Niger. They are coming close to all the Francophone countries coming to Africa. Should we bother about them or we should be okay? 
I don't think I, will, I can speak for the Ghana Ministry of Foreign Affairs. This is, you know, relationships of any kind, especially dip diplomatic interaction, is the domain of government. So we, the outsiders, or we, the common people, we can advise government, don't be too close to, to, to this country, or don't be so close with that other country. But in fact, it's not our decision. We don't have enough information to come to a determination. But you might remember that Ghana and Soviet and Russia, which is the crux of the Soviet Union, were extremely close during the time of the Kwame Nkrumah era. During the Nkrumah era, you know, Ghana, Guinea, Mali, uh, the, the, the buttress, the support for that entity was the was, uh, Soviet Union, which is now left with uh, Russia. And uh, for people of my age, uh, there were very many people whom in the 1960s went to study in Romania, in Russia, and so on. So we, do not, we did not have any negative attitude toward Russia as that. In fact, Ghana's position, and I think even today, the government will continue to preach that. We say we are of the non-aligned. You know, Ghana prides itself for being non-aligned. So if Soviet Union and its allies are having uh, what shall be the problems or animosity or conflict with Western Europe, uh, USA, and NATO, we should be in the middle. You know, we should we should be the, continue to be non-aligned as the Suhartos and the Tito of Yugoslavia and uh, Kwame Nkrumah and others uh, stood for. We try to to be in the middle, non-aligned, so that if there's conflict, we can intervene to bring peace. So that that is my situation. Now you may be wanting to uh, hear about. Uh, See, Russia's uh, sending of mercenaries into various parts of the Sahel now. Uh, one cannot say whether it's the Russian government or individual, individual Russians who are out there fighting. But mercenaries have always been the Western world. People the, among the whites have always people who will be going to fight uh, wars against payments. So... So that, that is how it is. But as, as far as Russia trying to establish relations with uh, Mali, Niger, and probably to a certain extent Burkina Faso, I, I would not say it's something which should lead to, to conflict. Because after all, what those countries, those African countries are complaining about is that they did not like the way France had been treating them in the past. But I, I should also not be basically criticizing the French because I, 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 I studied in France and I know all the nice things that they have done in the past and how supportive they were in the past. But if the Malians and the Niger people have specific problems with the French and so they are seeking new allies, I think it is not right for us to, to say you shouldn't. Uh, they, they, they are sitting by their fire and they know how oh, it hot is burning them. Yes, how hot it is. Good. Okay, I'm sorry for putting you through. Uh, I'm sorry for putting you out of your topic. But when we see knowledge, that is when we, we ask questions that are boggling our minds. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sorry for that. Let's assume you are a president of Ghana today and Russia comes to you for you to join force or Ghanaians to join force with them, if you should be a president now, what will you do and why will you do what you will do? You know, you always, if, even if you are a president, you go by the advice of the technical people. And the technical people are the people who are in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the main ministry as well as the research. So they would normally give you advice. but. For me, as a person, uh, Dr. Colin Sassari, I used to be in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And that's why I'm of the position that Ghanaians have benefited 
for the policy of non-alignment. And so that has been the attitude of the forward-looking Africans over the years. We, we're not going to join with China for them to fight a war against uh, the, the Taiwan. We are not going to join USA for them to fight a war against Afghanistan or something. We are non-aligned and as much as possible. We would rather join with international organizations who will help to, to bring peace when there's conflict anywhere. So if I were president and the uh, Soviet Union was coming, just as I wouldn't allow Americans to come and pitch their tent here and be lording it over us, I would also not uh, want the Soviet Union to, or Russia to, to come into Ghana and, and be uh, controlling things or lording it over us. I will, will continue to be impartial. So the tent is not here. People are saying it is here. For you saying this, I want to know. So no, the tent I, is not here. I, well, I don't think there's any tent. <laughs> 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 Ghanaians are proud of being uh, very, very independent. And I, I think you may have seen over uh, the, the years, particularly over the last four or five years, that uh, our president is often invited to go and speak at all types of uh, conferences, both in universities as well as economic forums and, and uh, all sorts of places. So I think Ga Ghana is respected as a trailblazer and is also respected as a country with leadership, uh, which is one of uh, forthright, truthful, and uh, intellectually sound. And, and we don't take, Ghana government never takes decisions uh, in an erratic manner. So I think many, many people respect us. And you, you have seen how even people, the president and so on, coming from the West Indies and so on, and the way they embrace uh, our Ghanaianness, uh, it's, it's all very attractive. I think we have. Uh, so, with you, Ghanaians should sleep when they see or hear that Russia is coming here or anybody is joining force with Russia, we should hold on to that law and sleep peacefully, that uh, we are not going to join anybody. We should, we should sleep. Yeah, yeah. What, 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 what should be worrying Ghanaians is uh, if the, 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 the conflicts in the Sahel zone start coming down towards our border, that, that will be something that we should be and it wouldn't be the Russians or the Americans or even the French, but it would rather be One the, the local people, the, the, the local people in Burkina Faso or Niger or wherever, who are having their problems, which may lead to a spillover and perhaps may influence some of they our citizens. They are all Africans, so one of our own. Yes. Mm. But I, I think in Ghana, so far, God has been on our side and our people uh, don't have animosity on the basis of religion because that is what can lead to a flare-up in, uh, in conflicts very, very quickly. You know, if, if it's religion, it becomes entrenched. But if, if it is religion. Uh, yes, but if it's one of economic uh, problems, once you solve the, the problem, then the, the conflict goes. So we are lucky we don't have any uh, religious conflict in, that is in more Ghana. serious than this economics uh, oh yes, yes really i think so is it because of gaza <laughs> i'm not sure how you bring gaza in but the way i, I ah but because they said it's a religious conflict the reason i'm bringing that one in yeah you are drawing me uh, very far from <laughs> the, the, our discussions. The, the, the thing about Gaza, perhaps if one would talk about it being a bit of religion. No, I'm talking of religion in, uh, in a country in West Africa that I will not know, name. You, you hear of people who go to a church and massacre so many people, and others who go to a mosque and massacre a, a, exactly. a lot of people. So that, that, that is what the problem that's, is. That's one it I don't think it's like us. Gaza. I don't think that, uh, that, that, that is the I'm, Gaza I'm, one. It was just an example because <laughs> we hear it's the 
um, Palestinians who are Muslims and Israelites who are Christians are rah, rah, rah. but that's that's okay so we should just make sure that we don't have any um, religious conflict here because yes. that one is scary yes. is that yes. correct yes okay so what can we do what can we tell them what are maybe they are watching us right now what advice do you have for this oh, no, but all I, these fraternities I, yeah. nothing has happened yes but since you are well endowed and you are saying that is serious I am taking advantage for you to advise us so that maybe it will sit in one individual's head. So when they see something coming, they will remember that mm, doctor said on revelations that this will not help us. So we should not do it. So advise us. I think the, the, the greatest advice or example that one can give is that of the way the chief imam, Sharabutu, has been leading the, the Muslim flock you know he even contributes to the construction of the national the cathedral. cathedral and the, 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 the christians also are so happy with him whenever they have their muslim uh, functions and so on you see the way christians would go and and sort of have the the ceremonies and so on with them Another interesting thing about Ghana, which uh, may, should be emphasized, you know, when we go to these our government functions, if the opening prayer is Christian, the closing is Muslim. If the opening is Muslim, the closing is... Uh, so we do have a very positive interaction among our religions. And I think that is how... It, it should be. It's okay. I, I don't, don't think to, it would change. I don't want to ask about the traditional worshippers, but it's okay. But because they are also now like a religious body. Yeah. So if you take them out and this one come to pray, and you don't go for break for traditional worshippers to also come and pray. So when you finish, then the Muslim come and do the closing prayer for all of us to have our share. And they also get angry. Is it not the same religious conflict? But let's leave that one. Don't answer. No, oh, but you know, I, 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 I'm uh, Sanahene of uh, Tutuakuya since 1983. Yeah. And uh, so I would say that the traditional religion observers have not been left out at all. We pour libation in, in, in government functions. At where? When was the last time you saw them pouring libation? No. Let's use six March. Well, probably not six March because I think about uh, eight years ago or thereabouts, there was uh, uh, some leaders who were not comfortable about it because until that time, the, the, the Nananum and the Ulume were part. Were, were, were part of it. So but eight I, years I, of their chances, you have kept it. But you I, you I, have I, to compensate us. <laughs> 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 you are watching the biggest and the largest. Let's get straight into our topic. Projecting some outstanding Ghanaians is very, very important. Obi obeye bibi ama ye bi ay say ye projecte no. Honestly, aya ye nchada nche omu eni onya mara omu te asie omu wu ansani aye. But omu wu mpo ni yesi si ni history sa. Enka mkola ane ba omu begu so we gane ni beti mi aye. Like we are not like the some people are saying so we are getting going to get into that and then maybe we will change the narratives about ghana okay so papa please that's your topic take us through yeah i, I will begin by sort of an introductory part the i am president of the ghana association of uh, former international civil servants and uh, it's an institution which is in more than, it's a similar institution in about 80 countries, over 88 countries. When people go to work for the United Nations and they return to their country, then they set up an association of former uh, employees or staff of the United Nations. But in Ghana, ours is very peculiar because it's not only people who were in the United Nations organization and its agencies, but we have also included people who were in the World Bank, people who were in the IMF, people who were in the African Development Bank, people who were in the African Union. So what is special about our GAFES, Ghana Association, is that we have embraced 
all the people who have worked in international organizations, not only United Nations organization, but all other international organizations. The only thing is to be a member, among other things, you ought to have been working uh, nonstop for the United Nations for not less than five years. You know, so that, that, that is it. So that, that is where we are. The Ghana, the GAFIX was set up, it was created uh, and registered in 2001. So we are over 23 years old now. And uh, I'm the, uh, I think the seventh president of the association. The, the, the one who, the founding president was one Dr. Andrew Akutu, who was a medical officer, followed by one uh, Dr. Kennel Brew Graves. And, and, and then there were two or three other persons, including uh, Mr. Bentilo Wusu, and the fourth was uh, Mr. Andrew Esamwa, who is the owner of the ANC, uh, ANC Mall, and then engineer Kweku Osebunsu. He was the last president of GAFIX before I came in. I became president in, uh, in uh, March of 2023. The, the main objective of this GAFIX is to try to contribute to the socio-economic development of Ghana you know, by offering technical knowledge and skills to the authorities. Because as you can see in the book, so many of the Ghanaians who have come to retire have held very important positions in outside countries before. And so when they come, they want to make themselves available to be able to help Ghana, not only the government, but even other institutions or NGOs. So that is what, what is the principal focus of our organization. Another focus is also to encourage debate and discussion among the Ghanaians who have come uh, from abroad, who have been working with the United Nations and other international organizations, so that it will stimulate debate for economic development. So a third purpose is to make, uh, to make it easier for people who have been out of the country for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, they now come back home and they need that social interaction with people of their kind. So if they come and can meet with other people who are in the United Nations or other international organizations, it makes life comfortable for them. So these are the, the first part of the things of interest to us. The second part is for the members of this graphics to help in uh, projects which will be of support to various groups like the, the, the term which is often used is giving back to society. So we, we pay dues specifically for projects and we've, we've supplied uh, chairs and tables to certain schools before. We funded some NGOs which are doing environmental education in, in various schools in, in the central region in Winneba. We have uh, uh, been doing a, a lot of support in the project funding aspect. And it is in that project side that it was decided that we need to help the young generation by documenting material which will be of value for the current generation and even the generations to come. Okay. So it is in that context that funding was made available for work to be done to compile this uh, book and is the only this is the volume one in the series some outstanding Ghanaians. so this is the first one which was launched on the 13th of march uh, in order that i will not be misunderstood i was not the person who wrote the book in fact uh, uh, our colleagues in the graphics uh, would rather prefer the term compiled there's one Dr. Eugenia Datiba, who is a member of the Academy of, uh, the fellow of the Academy of Arts and Sciences, who used to lecture in Legon and worked in the UN. She and uh, a second lady, Dr. 
Agnes Edu, who was, uh, among other things, a, a UNICEF representative with various African countries, and a young Ghanaian, a very brilliant young Ghanaian, uh, who is certainly under 30 years of age, who is the research assistant. So is the three of... add his name. Her name is there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I, she's called ba Barbara. Yeah, I was going to do so. Barbara Opong. Also a woman. Yeah, ba Barbara Brilliant. Opong. So also. she, so the three, she does uh, not only the research, but also interviewing many of the people who are still alive or their relatives and so on. So it's the three of them who have compiled this book. I, I'm only sort of uh, the president of the, uh, the, the organization which does this. So as we were saying, there's this uh, scarcity of material on Ghanaians who have done very well. And I remember you were at the beginning talking of heroes. In fact, the books or the group's original title was The Unsung Heroes Project. <laughs> but we decided that uh, unsung heroes may sound a little pompous. So that's why we changed it to just outstanding Ghanaians. But if, you know, we have always had outstanding Ghanaians. Only the worry is that if we do not document, then people will forget. Those who are more than 40 years of age will certainly remember that Mr. Kofi Annan was the first black secretary general mm -hmm. of the United Nations. But how many people remember that in 1965, 1964 to 1965, the first black president of the United Nations General Assembly was also a Ghanaian. And he's curious. Incidentally, he's also from Winneba, uh, and his name was Alex Kwisinsaki who mm -hmm. at one point mm -hmm. was the foreign uh, minister of Dr. Nkrumah. In the same vein, another very famous uh, Ghanaian personality who is studied in this uh, book, about 30, 40 pages on him, and whom I think many people may remember is uh, Dr. Robert Gardner. Mm -hmm. Dr. Robert Gardner is probably best remembered as the Ghanaian who was the executive secretary or head of the Economic Commission for Africa for 12 years from uh, 1963 to 1975. That was our, our own man, Dr. Robert Atta Gardner. But not only was he famous because he did that, but within Ghana, he was the person that Nkrumah assigned to do the nationalization of the positions. That is, he was head of civil service at that time, and he was the one who made the transfer from the European, uh, the British civil servants into Ghanaian civil servants from the 1963 area. That, that is the work that mm. uh, Dr. The, Dr. Gardner was doing for Ghana. Incidentally, he also taught uh, as a lecturer in Fura Bay College in, in, in Sierra Leone. So these are just three of, uh, three of the important outstanding Ghanaians whom we uh, have documented. But whereas somebody like Kofi Annan may be very well known and may have been popularized in other documents, there are many other people whom uh, people don't know much about and who have done such great things that they need to be published and for people to know about. And I'll just talk about one of them before uh, I, I, I say. There's one, Dr. Awaji. You know, for a long time, the area between Techiman to the, the north, the, 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 the Gunja areas, was completely vacant because of the Cheche fly, which was giving people the river blindness. So there was one Dr. Awaji who piloted the international effort which led to the eradication of the 
the, the, the uh, ch 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 fly because they were dumping uh, uh, some medication into the areas of the Volta uh, River where the flies were breeding. And so river blindness has virtually been eliminated in the country because of the work of Dr. Awaji and another person who was a foreigner. And the two people have their name embossed on the drugs which are used to treat the, 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 the river blindness uh, uh, sickness. So th these are some of the people, some may be a little well known, like Kofi Annan, but some may not even have been heard of except among the, the medical uh, sector or whatever. So these are some of the kind of people who we are writing about. We've written about in this volume one and already work has started on the volume two. You are watching the biggest and the largest. The way I'm a home, I'm a boom, and I'm a boom. But, Papa, everything you are saying, no. those who are able to do things across board or beyond borders, all these people you are mentioning are on Kwame Nkrumah's time. You attach Kwame Nkrumah to this. Let's come all the way down from 1990 up to 20, we are in 2024. Are there any heroes in them oh, if yes, we should yes, write yes, now? Yes, yes. Okay, please no, tell us. The, 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 the apart, reason, from, uh, uh, my, apart from Kofi Annan. Yeah, my introduction was that we have always had people who have been great achievers. And some of them, or most of them, are very well known. So I give the three examples as the Ghanaian heroes who are well known. But the others who are not so well known, I will then switch immediately to... Uh, Esther Oklu. I don't know if you've ever heard uh, of her. Uh, all these I mean. people are coming from my time. Uh, I want to know if we've, we yes. are able to. Among, among the people, the more uh, we among, among on the new, uh, the, 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 the younger ones is Professor Kweku Enin. Mm -hmm. Dr. Enin is the first African to have been deputy head of the International Atomic Energy Commission which is in Vienna, international... At, at which international, year? Uh, he, he, he just retired, I think, about uh, 10 years ago. I'm asking And this he's working now from the last regime, the, the, uh, the, the time of uh, Mah uh, President Mahama, and currently he has been working continuously on all the efforts that Ghana is trying to make to start using atomic energy and he's currently uh, the cha chairman of the, the board of okay. the uh, i'm atomic asking energy. this because we don't project like you people have started projecting this yes we don't project this to be for people to know so the youth will be attracted in trying mm. to create these kind of mm. things mm. for us to write yes. more about because the more we write the more we go forward mm. so now the it also brings us to uh, another uh, lady you, you may have heard uh, Professor Florence Dolphin. Uh -huh. She is recent. She is not that old. And she was the first uh, the lady to have been the uh, full professor and the first lady to have been pro vice chancellor in the University of Ghana. So, Professor uh, Dolphin is also written in about book. in this book. book. So, it's not only those who who are from ancient times no younger uh, younger people are okay. also i have three about. questions in your submission so okay. let me ask the first yeah. one these things you just said now when you say them my heart is happy overwhelmed mm. that we have people who have placed the name of the country up there why are all these things not in the education uh, system why so the, the children will read about this. Since you are here and you have professor, 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 what can you people do to put this thing into our educational system? Is it easy? If yes, why have you not done it? If it's not easy, why is it not easy? In order to be able to get uh, material out, they have to be written first. Okay? So this, this book was only out on the 13th of March of this year. And just as you are saying, the chairman of the launch was Nana Utu Srebo, who, who is uh, uh, 
at the same time the head of council of, of state and he was saying that we should try to get it as quickly as possible to the secondary schools but you see it would mean that this book you remember uh, when we were younger Shakespeare's books were told Shakespeare's stories retold because if you are writing 40 pages on one single person about his achievement and the academic XYZ, it may not be very suitable for even secondary school people. So what we think we will do in the first instance is to send as many books as possible to libraries so that grown up, uh, you know, educated people can read, refer, refer to it and also tell other people to go and read. But we ourselves, we need to commission people to retell the stories because you know this this book over 500 pages uh, with a uh, lot of serious writing may not be extremely easy but i think you know many of the curriculum in the uh, in our secondary schools now the books are written by Ghanaians so where they have examples from ancient greeks or ancient Romans, or from the Kenyatta, or from uh, the, uh, Nelson Mandela, very soon they should be able to use some of the Ghanaian stories in the books that they write for the, the Ghanaian secondary schools and primary schools. So okay. that, that, that's what I will say. So yes, we, we, need, we need to get but it, it will it, get there it, one yeah, day. Yeah. We, we have to do okay. very soon. You are yes. watching the biggest. I said I'm asking you just three questions. Yes. So now that's the first one. The second one is this. All these people you are mentioning or calling are people who have degrees, professors and ra ra ra. Do we have any hero who didn't go to school or who has no education at all doing something that cross or go beyond the borders? There's a man called Bano. I have to refer to the book to remember the first name. He was Bano. He was a photographer based in the Palladium area of Gamashi. And he is so well known for his photographic exploits. Then again, you might say that is from the olden days. But then, you know, those were the days when we didn't have digital uh, uh, photos. Mm. So you get people to a room and there's a background and there's this and that fantastic photos which uh, this person has, I think has, we've has had his son on this uh, uh, show before ah, okay Who so said fantastic mm -hmm. things that he has produced and uh, some of uh, his works are in in uh, museums not only in 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 Ghana but museums abroad is James James uh, Bano so he is, he is one person who didn't go to, uh, who, who did not necessarily. The professor, uh, professor and the, guy, professor your and big English, uh, yes. but he did something. That's what I wanted to know. Yeah. So those who are watching us will not be like, oh, me, dear, me, me, education, me, 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 to me, to me, yes, you can also do something. That's what, yes. the reason I asked that question. The last question, then I'm done with you. Mm. This book sitting there, a big book like that. You mentioned the people who, I'm not saying they are the only ones who worked on it, but you mentioned their names first. It means they are very important when it comes to this book. Two females and one male. No, all three females. All three females. Yes. Barbara Opon, Eugenia Datiba, and Dr. Agnes Edu. All three are females. Great. Do you think we should push for a female president? That is one. And why are we not having enough ministers in the parliament? Why, what are we not doing right as women to get more people inside there? And then my last one, you answer these two first. <laughs> you answer these two first. When the time of something comes, it just comes very smoothly. It is true that there are certain roles which people attribute to the different genders, you know. When you, you are talking of a soldier, immediately you think of a man and muscles and so on. And when you are thinking of uh, looking after people who are in distress or who are ill, 
you think of, of women because they have maternal instinct. But you'll find that uh, even though about 50, 60 years ago, the top doctors, medical doctors, were mainly men. Now, in almost all countries, not only Soviet Union, in almost all countries, the top medical doctors are female. So it, the, the, the time will come uh, when these things will, the, the, among the people who have been uh, documented about here is one, uh, Mrs. Ani Jage, who was a judge. And so Ani Jage is known to be one of the people who have really been fighting for the cause of women. There's another person whom we haven't had time to talk about, that is uh, Dr. Uh, Mary Chinrihese, you know, mm -hmm. who was in the Ghana Ministry mm -hmm. of Economic Planning and became the first African to be number two at International uh, Labour Organization in, in Geneva. So she is also one of the militants for African, for um, women uh, development. And interestingly, the, the, the university where I did my first degree, the vice chancellor is a woman, the chairman of the council is a woman, and the vice chancellor is precisely uh, Mrs. Uh, Chinri Hesse. All three are women. It will come. The, the, it would, with, on the political side, uh, you might have some of your staff research it, but the countries where the women have done very well in terms of uh, parliamentary positions and so on, have been countries in which specific quotas have been given, like uh, like Rwanda, where you say 50% of the MPs should be women. So even you, the parties who are competing, you have to make sure that you, you, have ach you mm, achieve to that. To contest. Yes, but uh, uh, in other countries, I, I, I don't know whether uh, France or UK, you have much more than 20 or 30% of the MPs being female. So it's it's, it's very difficult, it's very difficult for the position. And in our countries also, the energy and the effort that is needed to be elected as... To contest. To it's contest. Not it's, it's, not it's, it's difficult. Change. Whereas in places where it is more of, I won't say cabal, it's, it's, it's more of negotiation and so on, like in the UK, they have the prime ministerships. Women become prime minister in uh, in UK because the, the the party big shots will see the individual who will be able to espouse their cause for them. So there was a time when it was Margaret Thatcher and more recently some other uh, ladies. But when it is one of presidency, like in Senegal, where the man who should have been president is even now still in prison, you know, in our kind of uh, campaign the uh, energy uh, 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 and the and, things you have and to the go risk through. and you now have to go around the 275 constituencies mm. probably four or five times Aye. you will be as well where will your children be Aye. so but but i think we should we should insist i don't know if uh, if there's a much advocacy yeah we will do that uh, if if we there's uh, let's join force if if there's enough advocacy you might insist on there being a, a, law. a law putting at a start a percentage for Maybe the ministerial mm -hmm. appointment mm -hmm. to begin with. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we, we are doing well with the municipal and district chief executive. <laughs> <laughs> you are watching the biggest daddy thank you so much i want you to give your last words to Ghanaians and where they can get this book if there are any social media handles if yeah. there are anywhere they can get okay. it your last words in one minute then yeah. okay. you add whether so it's called a i would i would rather start with the end in that uh, for those who want to uh, get uh, copies of the book and I think it will be a very good thing because the more people buy, because now we funded it with our own uh, dues, we paid from our own pocket. And so if we are able to sell it and recoup our money, 
then we'll be encouraged to continue with the production. Right now, Kingdom Bookshop has copies in the University of Ghana Bookshop. But I think, I suppose they can sell it in other outlets of Kingdom Bookshop. Then we have EPP. EPP has also received copies of the book uh, from their Accra City Mall that is near the Legon, the, the police station. That, that, that bookshop also, you can, you can get it. That is EPP. We are now negotiating with the Methodist Bookshop Group because we are told that they are able to distribute in a whole lot of places and uh, we are also working. So those are the, the ones which exist, EPP and Kingdom Bookshop. We are going to work very quickly on getting uh, the Methodist Bookshop to stock some of the book in the course of uh, this week. And we are told there's a good bookshop in, uh, in uh, the airport in Kumase. I think we'll get one also to the airport in Kumasi as soon as possible. They, but my, my, my so as I said, thank you very much for the opportunity to come, to come and talk. Uh, not about myself so much, but a lot more about the great achievers. The, the thing to remember is that not all of these achievers were necessarily children of chiefs or children of uh, lawyers children of traders. In fact, one of them, whose name I will not mention, the father was a blacksmith and the mother, the mother was making pots. But the type of effort that she put into her work, when she was in boarding school, in middle school, she used to take food from the house to go and cook because she couldn't uh, pay the, the fees for eating in the school. And yet, when she came out and started working, she worked so hard that she was given a scholarship to go and continue her studies in, in the UK, which at that time was the place, the place to go. So the, the, we, we have to remember one thing. Whether you are from a wealthy background or you are from a poor background, the important thing for each young person is to be dedicated and to be disciplined. We know so many people who are from wealthy families have gone to the best schools, but then they turn out to be not so well, mm -hmm. even if not you know, morally, uh, physically. So we, we have to try to be very dedicated, spend enough time learning, because it's, it's not possible to achieve greatness if you are not studying very hard. You know, they might say that uh, so, so some of the, the greatest and the wealthiest people uh, did not finish their university education. But they were in their garages, you know, like the Bill Gates. Knowledge, he, was in knowledge, his, knowledge. he was in his garage working probably 14 hours a day. So working and acquiring knowledge doesn't necessarily need to be in the university environment. You could, you could be working on, on your own, like the... The, the point which is often made that the Beatles they played more than 10,000 hours before they started getting to the peak that, that, that they, they got to. So uh, what I want is hard work, hard work, hard work and secondly before I, I end that the young people should take inspiration from what they hear of what our achievers and the outstanding Ghanaians have have done in the past. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Papa. Hey, in this book, you government Munko Hunu Samun and Namun Chiak and Amon Chicha Mancro for you no monkey. Because yeah, if no, you no, have yeah. to even do this in CDs, so those who cannot actually read can also hear. You shouldn't be brofun so that you will get to my people in the central region, every corner. If I become the president, you, you central region people, you are finished. <laughs> Papa, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you, honestly. We will make sure we push this to the... Uh, 300 cities. 300 cities, yes. that's a lot. It will be capital. But we will still buy it. Yes. It's worth yes. it. Yes. We will still buy it. But I am... It will also Trump. be on Amazon. Amazon. Mm. The Trump is in the president. No one can see it. No one can see it. No one can see it. No one can Mm. We, we, we have decided that we'll give out not less than 50 of them 
in uh, major libraries, not only in Greater Accra, but all the major libraries that will we'll get the list from okay. the li library they are services. They our time is gone. It's up, Thank yes. you so much. Okay. Papa, we do appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Na mo fama anko la no wati ase no mo ridi na encourage you mo en ginger mo no mo nya more things we are the best Ghanaians we are the most powerful people on earth I'm telling you trust me shalom.